Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Catherine Crochets podcast. My name is Catherine, I'm a crochet designer from South London in the UK and welcome to my podcast where I like to talk about all my recent crochet and knitting projects that I've been working on and also a little chat um, at the end about what I've been listening to while I've been crocheting and knitting this month as well. Um, thanks very much for, for tuning in, welcome back if you've watched before and hello if you're new here, I hope you enjoy the podcast. I've got... Um, Four different projects I think that I'm going to share with you today, two crochet and two knitting. Um, two of them are finished objects, well one of them I'm counting as a finished object, um, although it's got a few ends still to sew in, um, and two of them are still works in progress. And also going to talk a little bit about a yarn, well there's the Stitch Festival, not, a, not a, just a yarn festival, it covered lots of sewing things as well that I went to the other week with my mum um, and had a really nice time there as well. So um, how are you all? I hope you've all been keeping well. We've had quite a busy few weeks since since I last spoke with you, um, but it's been quite a nice month as well. Um, if you're in the UK, I think obviously you know that the weather's been pretty rubbish and although it's supposed to be spring now, it's been really wet and grey. It's a very very grey damp day today as well but um, we've still had some nice times as well so in the UK we have Mother's Day in March so we had that earlier this month and um, my daughter's made a really nice afternoon tea um, for us to enjoy at home. There were scones that they made, little sandwiches, um, we had macarons, they bought those, they didn't make the macarons. Um, there were blini with um, they bought the bases, but they sort of assembled them with smoked salmon and I think it was sour cream. It was either sour cream or creme fraiche, something like that. They were really yummy. Um, tea, obviously plenty of tea with the scones and jam. Um, and I've probably forgotten something, but that was really nice. Um, and it took them a, quite a lot of preparation getting that all ready. So that was good. And then in the week after that, it was my birthday. Um, which was also really nice but it was a bit this is the first time I've really felt it being a bit of a shame having the two so close together um because I think they put in such an effort for Mother's Day then they were a bit tired by the following weekend when it was um time for my birthday but we went out for dinner to celebrate my birthday so it was a bit less um effort for them and then my daughter made me made some birthday cupcakes to have on the weekend so that was nice and um, I thought I'd just show you, I got one sort of yarny present, which was for my daughters. This was, this was for my birthday, I think, as opposed to Mother's Day. And they got me this little pouch for keeping my, my stitch markers in, which I was really pleased about. Because I've been saying for a while, I've got one big case that I have all the hooks and stitch markers and scissors and needles and everything in. And it's a bit... Um, bit messy so I was hoping for something that um and a separate case just for stitch markers so it's easier easier to find them and I really like that it's got a cute little um cloud on it as you can see I'm not sure where it's from there's no label I was just looking a minute ago so I'm afraid I can't tell you where where to get it from if you want one um I could ask them and um pop the link below if I find out but anyway that was a little yarny gift that I got um, girls have also been busy performing this month. My older daughter, um, she's in year seven, um, which is um, the first year of secondary school in the UK, age um, 11 to 12 year olds. And they had their end of term concert last week, which was brilliant, lots of singing and um, different musical performances, orchestras and smaller groups playing. They did a medley of songs at the end from Les Miserables, which was just brilliant. That was really good. Um, and then my younger daughter, she's in year four, which is eight to nine year olds. And 
high school year, years three and four together put on a performance um, on Wednesday this week of a show called, it was called Wizwam Alakazam and it's about these wizards um, who live in a castle called Sun Castle and they've all got their own special individual talents. Um, and then the sun starts to to fade one day and everything goes dark and they all have to find how to work together to to get the sun to come back and there's lots of singing and dancing and there were some quite funny moments in it as well so that was really nice and then today today's friday the last day of march and it's the last day of term today so there's um an egg hunt at school um this afternoon sort of before they before they finish so um my parents are invited into that so that should be fun as well and then we're on easter holidays for a couple of weeks so um yeah that's um that's sort of what that, those are the highlights of what i've been up to this past month um oh i was also going to mention what i was wearing i was rummaging around in my drawer i haven't worn this for ages but it's crochet so i thought i'd tell you what it is it this is called the maestral shawl and i made this ages ago and it's um made with a sheep peas wool. I can't remember the name of the wool, but obviously it's the black and gray one and it's a free pattern. I'll just take it off so I can show you the stitch pattern a bit better by a designer called Nimriel. It's on Ravelry and I'll pop a link um, to it and any other patterns I mention in the um, notes below um, this video if you want to find anything. But um, yeah, it's got this sort of really open flowery type pattern which is really nice I think the reason I don't wear it that much is um, this white section here at the end I'm not so keen on I think I would have preferred it if it was all black and grey or just all the kind of charcoal grey colour um, it's also it worked out massive so these ends are quite long which sometimes is fine but sometimes you want something that would be perhaps more just this length down here instead of going all the way down past your bum. Um, but it is nice and I think I should should try and wear it a bit more. So anyway, that's the introduction then. That was rather a long one. Um, let's move on to my finished objects. So the first finished object I've got to show you, I didn't even mention this in my last podcast because I hadn't started it and it was a very quick project and it was for my mum and I'm going to give it, we're seeing my parents tomorrow, we're going down to stay for the weekend and I'm going to give it to her then because the last time I saw her she sort of said she'd quite like some so um, when you get a request um, it's, not, it's nice to have a request isn't it because then you know that it will definitely be appreciated. So. I'd made, knitted hair, if you go back a few episodes you'll probably see it, over Christmas I was knitting a hat, the Ribbon Gather hat, by Potter and Bloom with this yarn which is Serdar Jewel Spun and I've still got this much left um, but I had even more left um, after the hat and I gave the hat to my mum because she said she'd quite like it and then last time I saw her a few weeks ago she said that she would like some fingerless sort of hand warmer mitten -y type things in the same yarn if possible so um i had a look for a pattern and i thought about knitting them but i wanted to get them done more quickly and i'm not so fast at knitting and i think knitting does just take longer anyway doesn't it so i was looked at knitting patterns and then i thought actually you know what it doesn't really matter if you have a knitted hat and crochet hand warmers i think that's still absolutely fine so I made these hand warmers um, with the Serdar Jewel Spun Yarn and it's crochet. And what was quite nice about this crocheting with this yarn instead of knitting with it is you get through the yarn a lot quicker so you get to the different colours more quickly. They look very different indeed because they've had different parts of the ball of yarn. But I think, I think that's probably okay. I, I think I prefer the colours in this one, the greens and purples. I'm not such a kind of ready maroony person really um but yeah this is i'll just put pop them on and show you what they look like when they're on they were i was a bit concerned they might be a little bit tight they do come in different sizes i 
I can't remember which size I made now. I think it might have been medium. But actually, when you put them on, they're just nice and snug and fit, fit really well. Um, but there are separate patterns for the left and right, because as you make them, you can see on there, if, I don't know if you can really, um, but that's where the join is. It sort of goes up diagonally across one side of the glove. So that's supposed to be on your palm, so that the back of your hand is um, is nice and neat without without that that join. So I had to put that one on the wrong hand. That's the left one, and then this is the right one. So yeah, I'm going to give them to her tomorrow. I'm going to hopefully get this video edited and uploaded um, today, but I think I'll set it so it doesn't. Not that my my mum does watch my videos, but I don't think she watches them that immediately after publication so I probably don't need to worry but I'll set it anyway so that it's not public until after I'll have been able to give these to her tomorrow which will be around about lunchtime anyway so that'll be fine. So yeah those are the, all my X's mittens and they're a pattern it's a free pattern on Ravelry by a designer called Jessica Ryan and I'll pop a link to that below if you want to make some. It's a really straightforward easy pattern um, there was, I think there was a mistake in it, um, which I noted in in my notes on my project on Ravelry, if you're interested. I think when you make the second mitten, if you followed the instructions, you'd have ended up, the, the count for how many to skip or something was wrong when you come to the round that leaves the thumb hole. Um, that's the first round that's different anyway, um, for, for the left and the right ones. Um, but it wasn't major and I think it's quite obvious what the correction is anyway when you're making it because you, you can see what you're supposed to be doing after you've made the first one. So yeah, those are that, all my X's fingerless mitts. I'm quite pleased with those. That's my first finished object and that is a proper finished object. They are all, all the ends are woven in and I will wrap that up in a minute after I've filmed this. Um, so it's all ready to give to my mum tomorrow. And I've still got more of that Sirdar jewel spun yarn left, so that ball just is never ending. I'll have to find something else to make with it. I did see a pattern for a beret made with, it's an Aran yarn, a knitted beret made with Aran yarn, which looked quite nice. But I think I'd probably rather have that in a plain colour than um, a, a variegated colour. But we'll see. Um, so my other finished object, which I'm counting as a finished object, but it still needs quite a few ends woven in, is the blanket that I've been talking about all year so far, which now has a name and is called the Wolves of the Flower Blanket. I'm just going to move back a bit so I can show you the whole thing. Well, as much as possible in one go, because it's very big. Ta da! There we go. So you get sort of a sense there of the size. I'll sit down again in a minute. I hope you can hear me when I'm talking behind the blanket. It doesn't muffle my voice too much. So, um, yeah, so it's this, the two, these are some of the ends poking over, but still need saying in. So the two shorter ends um, have got half hexagons, so three half hexagons to straighten straighten them off and then the two, the two long sides are um, zigzaggy down the edges it flops when you hold it up if I hold it like that is that better yeah then you get a sense of the zigzags what I think I might do this is an acrylic and polyester yarn it's 50% acrylic and 50% recycled polyester bottles I think um, so I'm, what I might do is, I haven't done it yet, I literally finished off the border this night, uh, yesterday evening, um, is perhaps steam block it to get these bits lying nice. Although I have found in the past with previous blankets that just a bit of leaving it draped over a sofa for a while, um, for a few days, and it all um, works out. Um, but yeah, not quite so impressive to, when you're holding up like that. So yeah, so since last time I finished off the whole hexagons, I think I had a few left to do last time I shared it with you. I've done the half hexagons, which I was debating whether to do the whole flower in it or just do it all white apart from the bits of green. 
And as you can see, I went for the flowers and I think that was the right choice. I'm pleased, pleased I've got them there. And the, the difficulty, or the, it's not that difficult, but the sort of challenge with the half hexagons is that you work them in rows back and forth. Whereas the, these hexagons you work round all the same side. So here you're swapping from right and wrong side. And because I've got to get this texture in this flower, I've got front post stitches. So to make sure it's the same here, when you're working on the wrong side, you need to do back post stitches. But I think there's only one round actually that that, that applies to. So it wasn't actually as um, fiddly and tricky as I thought it might be. And then for the border, I've done, it's all just double crochet or single crochet in the US terms. And I've just done a round of green that sort of links up the leaves. Um, then white and then the last three rounds are the same colours. It's so great today, it's not really showing up so well. Um, but they're the same colours as the flower. So they go, so the flower has got a slightly purpley grey in the middle. It's really dark, isn't it? Then um, a brighter blue and then this dark, slightly greeny blue. And it's got, I've done them in the same order um, here in the border to sort of get that um, gradient of colours that you get through the flower repeated in the border there. So it's quite a simple border, but I thought all the pattern, there's so much pattern in the blanket that um, I didn't want anything too fancy or floopy on the border. Just something quite simple to show it all off. And la was it last Friday or the Friday before I got, I think it was two weeks ago, I did um, quite a lot of work on writing up the pattern and I've written up quite a lot of it now. Um, I haven't done the border yet, I need to add that, but that's never too complicated um, and it needs a final read through and everything, but the whole hexagons and the half hexagons, I got all of that bit written up, although I need to make a couple of tweaks to the, ha the half hexagons um, and the joining instructions and so on, because you do it as a join as you go, so it's quite nice, it grows. You see the blanket growing as you make it and it keeps you warm. Um, so yeah, a few last tweaks to that, which I might have time to do this afternoon. I want to get them done really soon so that then I can get the pattern out, out for testing and hopefully released really soon. Um, yeah, and the other, I did mention it has a name now, it's the Waltz of the Flowers Blanket, which is new, it didn't have a name last time. Um, to me, I always think the flowers sort of look like they're twirling and dancing a bit, like one of those dances where everyone's just twirling and waltzing around, around the dance floor. Um, and I also quite like, because obviously a waltz is three beats, isn't it, um, repeated in, in the waltz music. Um, and you get six sides on a hexagon, so it's two lots of three. So that, I quite liked how that tied in. I, d I think if it had been a square, I'm not sure I would have been able to call it so I might not have been so happy with it. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Um, my Before I made this one, my favourite blanket that I've made of all, all my own patterns, my favourite design was my Clarissa, Clarissa blanket, which is made with squares. But now I've made this one. For me personally, I think this one might be my favourite. I really like the texture, the sort of 3D bit in the flowers with the um, with the post stitches in there um, and I just thought I've been meaning for ages to make a hexagon blanket with flowers in it so I'm really pleased um, that I've, I've actually done that now because it just seemed like such a natural design that was just waiting for me, me to make so yeah really pleased with that and hopefully it won't be too long now a few more weeks and I'll be able to release the pattern so if you're watching this and you're not signed up to my email list, I'll pop a link to that below. Um, and if you want to get notified when the pattern is released, if you sign up to my email list, then you'll get an email so you definitely won't miss it. And you'll also get a discount code for a discount off of the pattern when it's released. And that code will be bigger than any, um, any other discount that I share publicly on social media. So there's always a bigger discount on my email list. So if you're yeah, would like to get notified when the pattern's released, sign up for that. Um, 
And that's it for finished objects, but I'm really pleased because that was that blanket. I started in January, really soon after Christmas, and it's now the last day of March. So I'm really pleased to have that finished. It's such a big, big project. And I've got lots of other smaller things that I really want to, a couple of things I want to get back to that I haven't worked on for a while and things I want to finish off. So um, yeah, feels good to have that. Apart from the ends, it feels really good to have that out of the way. I think with the ends, what I'm gonna do is make myself do at least 10. There's still quite a lot to do. Some sections are done completely. I'll show you the back. Um, but there, obviously, you can see there's still quite a few. Some bits are all completely clear, apart from around the edge. But yeah, so I'm gonna um, set myself a goal of every day, I have to sew in at least 10 ends before I do any other crochet or knitting. And then hopefully that way I'll, I'll get them done. And who knows, some days I might do more than 10 if I lose count or something. So yeah, hopefully they should then all be in. We're woven in before the pattern's released. Um, yeah, so that's it for finished objects. So let's move on to whips. So I've got two whips to share with you today. So all my, both my finished objects for crochet and both my whips are knitting. Um, so the first one is a little update on my No Frills sweater that I, I think I started this in January too. After Christmas, I'm pretty sure it was January. So it's coming on, I'm just not particularly fast and don't have as much time to work on things as I'd like. So, um, but it's, it's getting there, it's making progress. So I'm at the ribbing now at the bottom of the body. So yeah, that's the front I'm showing you. And then I'm down here on the ribbing and you need to make quite a bit of ribbing. So I think I've done about three centimeters. I measured it last night when I finished and you need to do seven in total. So um, it's knit one pole one all the way around. So it takes takes a little while, um, but um, yeah, I'm getting there. So when we go down to my parents tomorrow, I'm gonna take it and hopefully get quite a bit done while we're in the car. That's the plan anyway. And then it's the sleeves. And I've been making this along with Emma at Emma C Makes, and she's finished hers now. She shared it in her podcast yesterday. So. I'll pop a link, go and check it out if you want to see hers because she was wearing it and it looks absolutely beautiful. Really soft, lovely drape. It looks really, really good. Um, and we were talking um, the other week about the length on the body because it seemed in the pattern, it said knit it so that the back is, I can't remember how many, obviously it varied from size to size, but so many centimetres and then move on to the ribbing. And to me, it didn't seem that that long really. You only had like a small distance from sort of under the arm and then you're at the ribbing. Um, so I added, I think I added actually an extra three centimetres to mine so I've compared it to another jumper I've got that I quite like. Um, and I saw when Emma's wearing hers um, yesterday, she, her, she didn't do any extra length but it's not a short crop jumper at all. It's a proper length down to your hip really um, and it looked absolutely fine but when she sort of lifted her arms up and moved around um, that the bit from the underarm down to the ribbing isn't actually that long so maybe I've just got the sort of proportions of the jumper different in my head to how, how they actually are um, but also it's quite loose so whereas like this jumper I'm wearing today it's it's much tighter so I guess it's got a longer distance under your arm this one um, is much looser and I think probably the underarm is is down here um, so I think that might be it but yeah and she also said which was encouraging is that the sleeves are quite quick to do because it starts off you've got quite a big large number of stitches um, to go around but then um, you decrease quite quickly and she said by the time you get to the cuff the end of the sleeves you're just whizzing around because it's really short so that that was nice and encouraging so I'm going to, yeah, see, hopefully have a good, now I've finished the Waltz of the Flowers blanket, I hopefully have a good, um, what's the word, crack on with this and get this done in the next few weeks. And by that time, probably spring will have arrived properly and we might be having some warm weather and it'll be too warm to wear it. But um, 
maybe in the evening so I can still wear it. That'd be nice. Um, it'd be, and it'd just be good to have it finished because I really, I'm really happy with the colour. Um, I've said before, but if you haven't heard and you're interested, this is um, Drops, Drops Lima. I can't remember the name of the colour. It's a sort of dusky brick red, slightly soft brick red, which I really like. Um, it's number 9021. Um, yeah, I think I might have too much of it, actually. It's a DK weight yarn, though, so I can always, I'm sure I can find something else to do with it. But um, I've got quite a few balls left still, and um, obviously only the sleeves and a bit more ribbing to go. So I suspect that we'll have some left over. But yeah, so that's my no frills. And then the other whip that I've been working on, which is also knitting, is over here. And I think I showed you the yarn last time. I bought this yarn at the Unravel Festival at the end of February from Fruitful Fusion. And it's some sock yarn. Um, I am knitting just a plain, this is only my second pair of knitted socks. And I'm just doing a plain vanilla sock because my first sock that I knitted or first pair of socks weren't vanilla. So I thought, well, really, you should, I should make a vanilla sock. But then when I looked on Ravelry for vanilla socks, there were loads of patterns came up and they all seemed different. And some were cuffed down and some were toe up. And I didn't really know which one to go for. So what I thought I'd do actually, which is what I've done, is use the pattern that I used last time. So the previous pair of socks that I made were the October socks by Emma. Um, a potter at potter and bloom and they have like a nice it's quite a simple pattern but it's just like a rib by that you do by slip stitching on in alternate rows all the way around the um leg and and the top of the foot um so i thought well i'll just use that pattern because i know i can make it and it fits and everything and um i'll just skip the slip stitches and knit them instead it, what it has got in that pattern is this sort of like ribbed bit on the back of the heel, which is quite nice. I don't know if, don't know, I'll have to look at some more patterns and socks and things. I don't know if that's standard in all sock patterns or if that was just special to the October socks, but I did keep that bit in. But other than that, I'm just knitting around ribbed cuff and knitting all around. And so I, this was the main yarn I'm using, which is called Obsidian, which is from Fruitful Fusion. And then I got a few... A set of three mini skeins from her at the same time and one was this and when I held up the two skeins of yarn next to each other I thought that they'd be quite a good contrast but now this one's knitted up it's a lot more yellowy than I was thinking it was going to be and I'm not 100% sold on this combination which is why I was also thinking of using it for the heel but I haven't in the end I've just stuck with the black and also, I wasn't entirely sure that I'd have enough to do cuff, heel and toe all in this. So I'm just going to do cuff and toe in this and obviously the same on the other sock as well. But yeah, this is this is coming on. Obviously, I've turned the heel. Is that what you, how you say it? I've done the heel and now I'm coming along this bit. So there's still, still a bit of way to go. But although I'm not 100% sure about this, so the more of the black I do, the more the happier I am with this bit. Um, I absolutely love this dark colour. It's got like flecks of maroonyness in it. Is that catching it properly? Yeah, it's really nice and deep. With the hand dyed yarns, I do prefer the more tonal yarns with a sort of slight variation in colour like this. But I find the ones that have lots of different colours and flecks and things. I'm not so keen on how they look. I think they look absolutely beautiful when they're a skein, but when they're um, knitted or especially when they're crocheted up, I don't find that they look so attractive. Whereas the colours you get in the tonal yarns, I absolutely love. So yeah, that's that sock. So that that and my no frill sweater are two projects I really want to get cracking on over Easter and, and get um, quite a bit, a bit done on hopefully and finish them off. And then, yeah, I've got another crochet project that's been lingering for a while that I started. I think I might have started it in January as well, just using up some scraps. So I'd like to get back to that and finish that off. I don't like having things unfinished for too long. I don't like having 
I like, it's nice to have a bit of a variety of whips and having a sock actually is really good because it's small and good for taking out. Um, but I don't like having too many projects on the go because then I feel like they just all take too long if you split yourself between lots of projects. Um, so I have got the yarn all ready to make a new crochet top, which I mentioned last time. But I think I'm going to try and finish one, at least one more project before I start, start that top. And then I've got more sock yarn to do more socks after this. I have considered buying another, do you call it a pair of needles when it's circular or just a circular needle? Anyway, another one of these so that I could cast on another sock. But then I thought I just I will have to wait even longer before I have have some. So I've resisted and not bought not bought any more needles, which I think is probably the right decision. Tempting as it is though to start another sock. Um, but yeah, that's my two whips. I so say that's the that's the end of the whip section really. Um, but let's move on to Yarny Chat. So in Yarny Chat today, I thought I'd talk to you about the Stitch Festival that I went to the other week with my mum. And this is a festival for sewing. So there's like dressmaking, embroidery, knitting, crochet. They had punch needle stuff. Um, there were some stalls with some do you call them block stamps like wooden stamps for printing on fabric which were absolutely beautiful um all different things like that there was an awful lot well for someone who doesn't sew there was a lot of um fabric stalls um my mum's into embroidery so she did buy some some bits of fabric um so i think it was a good it was a really nice festival and it's a lovely building it's in an old I think it's an old cattle market the business it's in the business design center and i think it used to be a cattle market it's got a really high old domed glass roof so it's a really nice light building um it's a really nice place to go it had a nice area seating area for lunch as well which is obviously always important um and lots of nice stalls for me there could have been a bit more yarn there was not that many yarn stalls to be honest and um sort of as a result the selection of colors and things um some of them were lovely yarn but just not not my colors i think because each dye obviously has their own favorite sort of range of colors that they go for um but i did find some and i did buy some yarn which i will show you now um, i bought two stains i spent forever looking at the um, stand with all the yarn on it and picking them up and pairing them. And um, I either wanted some small ones to make some stripy socks, um, small skeins, or um, also thinking about making a litmus cow. So I was thinking of getting one 100 gram skein and then some smaller ones, but I just couldn't work it out. <laughs> so in the end, the man there must have thought I was bonkers like spending so long picking up all the different colours. So in the end, I just got these two 100 gram skeins. And there were so many beautiful colours and I've gone for these, which look, um, I'll just move the bag up, um, which possibly don't look so exciting and interesting now, but I really like them. Um, they're not quite the same sort of yarn so this is both of these are from strictly hand dyed yarn which is a yarn dye from the isle of Wight, which isn't far from where i grew up i grew up in hampshire and my parents live there so it feels local ish um so this one is four ply 75 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nine nylon and it's called experimentalis blue so obviously it's a white with these sort of like bluey flecks in it and some darker flecks too um and yeah i'm quite looking forward well i think i might use this for socks and then i've got this one as well which there was a lady there and she said she bought this not quite this shade slightly brighter blue this is a very dark blue um but with the same fleckiness in it um, last year and she was wearing a shawl that she'd made from from the skein she bought and um, 
she um, yeah was I think she did quite a good job selling it because I bought this skein and then an, oh who did I see afterwards when I got home someone else on Instagram and a crochet designer um, she I didn't see her I don't know if I would have recognized her anyway but she'd been there the same day as me <laughs> and she'd had randomly I think she mentioned it in her stories or I don't know how it came about but she said someone she'd seen the exact same yarn and they presumably the exact same lady there can't be too many people like that also told her that she'd and showed her a shawl and sh showed her this the skein pointed to the skein of yarn and said said the same thing to her so that was quite funny when we found um, that we'd had that same conversation but so this is slightly different um fibers fiber content it's 85 percent superwash merino and 15 percent don eagle net but it is gorgeous so i don't know if you can combine they're both four ply this is 400 meters per 100 grams and this is 425 meters so you get slightly more in this skein for 100 grams than in this one so possibly I could do something stripy with them. I was thinking of making a litmus cow. Possibly I'll combine them with other minis and make socks. I think this one I would like to make either a shawl or a cowl or something with, possibly combined with one or more other colours. But um, they will definitely get used. And I had to buy something while I was there, obviously. So yeah, really pleased with that. So um yeah, it was a really nice day, um, really nice browsing around all the stalls with my mum. Um, there was a punch needle stall and they were sort of showing people how to do it and I got to have a little go at that, which was quite, um, that was really good fun actually. I can see how doing punch needling could be really satisfying and it seems quite quick too. Um, the kits, probably rightly so, but they're not, they're not that cheap, so I didn't, didn't buy, buy one. Um, but that looked like something really good fun. And also, as I said, mentioned, I was really, really loved the fabric printing, um, block print things. I took quite a few photos while I was there. So at the end of this podcast, I'll do a little um, sort of montage of all the photos so you can see. And there's a picture of um, some of the block prints so you can see what they look like. But again, they weren't cheap either. And if you don't have any other kit, you could buy it as a kit with the paint and the sponges and a tray and everything that you needed um, to do it. But then it all add, adds up. And I don't think I have time. I don't have enough time for crochet and knitting. So another hobby. I don't know when I'd do it. But you could also like they sold tea towels and tote bags and things like that to print on. So it did look really good fun. But maybe one day when I've got more time. And we also went to, so Janie Crow, the crochet designer, she had a crochet lounge there where you could go and make a little crochet flower. The pattern was there on a postcard. Um, and it was with Stylecraft Naturals. So it's a cotton and bamboo yarn. Um, yeah, so I, I am in lots of like really nice pastel-y colours. And then if you managed to complete a whole flower, which, I mean, if you can crochet, they weren't difficult, but obviously perhaps not everyone at the festival was a, a crochet or that competent. So for some people, it would have been a bit more of a challenge, but there were people there to help. Anyway, if you finished one, you got a little key ring to put on it. So I think what I'm gonna do with this, I haven't done anything yet because I wanted to, to show you, but I think what I might do is like use it as a little charm on a project bag or something. When I got home, um, one of my daughters said, oh, it's a shame your name you're not Jamie Crow, isn't it? And I can see how if you had no idea, I'm holding up my hand, if you had no idea who she was as well, you'd probably just assume it was a, um, a name label, wouldn't you? Like the person's name. Maybe I should do a Jamie Crow project, make one of her blankets, and then put this on the project bag. That would be appropriate, wouldn't it? But yeah, so that was our day at the Stitch Festival, which was really, really nice. And I got the tickets. I got a pair of tickets. I won a giveaway on Instagram from Heather at um, Keep Calm and Crochet On. So we got, got in, me and I got the pair of tickets for free. So me and my mum got in for free. I don't think I would have gone if I hadn't won the free tickets. And 
it, although it was a lovely day, I don't think I'd rush to go back just because there wasn't, a lot of the stools weren't things I was interested in because they were fabric and sewing and things like that. Um, although they're nice to look at, it's not something I was thinking of buying at all. Um, and there wasn't that much yarn. So I think I definitely prioritised going to Unravel again, for example, where there was loads of beautiful yarn compared to um, the Stitch Festival. And I also watched, um, that was our dishwasher, it's just finished. Um, I also watched Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful. She um, released a video recently about her trip to, I think it was the East Anglia Yarn Festival in Norwich, which is a really good watch if you haven't seen it. I'd recommend it. Um, and that looked absolutely amazing. The amount of yarn dyes there, even much bigger than, I think, I think it was bigger than Unravel. It's hard to tell really, isn't it? Because from someone's video, and um, unravels in Farnham Mortings, which is like lots of small rooms, whereas the East Anglia Yarn Festival is at, I think it's called the East of England Showground, something like that, but it looks like it's one really big, massive room, um, like kind of like a sports hall, but it, not a sports hall, um, or it might be, I don't know. Um, so I think it has a different feel about it, but it felt from her video that there were more, um, more, yarn dyers, more sellers there. Um, that's the impression I got. So they, the Stitch Festival and Unravel are the only two festivals I've been to so far, but I'd definitely be keen to, to go to another one in the future. One, uh, though, you have to be careful, don't you? Because when you go, you have to buy yarn. And I think I need to use up some of the yarn that I've bought now before I go to any more. Mm. So, yeah, that's it for Yanni Chat. And the last um, section that I have to talk to you about is what I've been listening to while I've been working on the, my projects this month. So, as I mentioned before, I like to listen to various things, podcasts, and I watch YouTube videos, um, but I also listen to quite a few books on Audible, audiobooks, while I'm knitting and crocheting. Um, and this month I listened to an audiobook by Muriel Spark, which was free um, if you have an Audible subscription. I don't know if it still is. They aren't always free forever, I don't think. But it was um, Loitering with Intent. And years ago I read The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark and really enjoyed it. Um, I found it really funny and entertaining can't remember that much about what it was about now but I knew I liked it and that I wanted to read more by her and I never have got round to it so when this book came up as being available for me for free I thought I'd give it a go and I did enjoy listening to it but I don't feel like I enjoyed it as much as when I read Prime of Miss Jean Brodie I didn't finish it and think oh I really want to listen to another one of hers straight away it was a little bit, there were lots of really nice good bits, good characters, but it was also a little bit odd, I felt. And the main character, I wasn't entirely sure how much we were supposed to like her or, or how much I did like her. So it's about this woman in her, I think she's probably in her 20s, called Fleur, who lives in London. It's set in, um, I think it's her diary, so it's set, you know, exactly when it is. It's 1949 to 1950. So there's talk of a bit of rationing um, going on still after the Second World War. And she, she's a writer or a would-be writer, but she needs to work while she's working on her novels until she's published. So she gets a job with, I've just written, I've, before I came on, I made some notes because I always forget people's names. Um, so she gets a job with this man called Sir Quentin and he runs this society for generally quite rich, posh, influential people. He, um, is, he's very um, attracted by people who have titles and things like that. That's very important to him. Um, and he runs this society where they all write their memoirs and then for fear of anything being in it that they could be sued for libel for, the plan is not to publish them at all, but to just lock them away in a bank vault somewhere um, until 
they're dead, I think, and then they can, but then they've got it recorded and then they can all be free. But none of these people, I don't think, although they have titles and whatnot, I don't think any of them have lived particularly interesting lives. So Fleur gets a job with him, basically sort of as a secretary and kind of editing them. But in the meantime, in the background, she's writing her own novel. I can't remember what it's called now, it's got a funny name. Um, which she'd started before she got this job and met Sir Quentin. But as she's writing it, she keeps saying, oh, isn't it strange how the character that I'd already come up with is really like all these other characters. And then the characters in this society of memoirs start um, doing things that have, she's already written in her novel. But I wasn't ever quite sure if actually she was being quite truthful about how much she'd come up with the characters herself and how much she was influenced and drawing on things from her meetings with these people in this memoir society. But then um, Sir Quentin gets his hands on the manuscript for her novel, which has been accepted by a, um, what do you call it? Oh, I can't remember what you call it. The people who publish books, a publisher. It's been accepted by a publisher for publication and he gets his hands on the manuscript and the people in society don't like it one bit because they can recognise themselves in lots of the characters. Um, so it's about what happens from there onwards. But I did find it, so it is quite, quite good and entertaining and interesting and there's interesting characters. But I did find it a little bit odd in that I wasn't entirely sure whose side some people were clearly bad. There's a brilliant old lady, Sir Quentin's mother, who's fantastic. She's probably the best, best person in the whole book. But everybody else, even Fleur, I wasn't quite sure how much I liked her. I think it's bit, though she had some really good sides to her and there's quite a bit of sort of feministy type issues and things come up, um, which, was, which was really good. Um, and I enjoyed, but yeah, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So if you've got an Audible subscription and you can get it for free, it was, was definitely interesting and entertaining. And I think one day I probably will listen to another or read another book by um, Muriel Spark because she's clearly extremely unique. Um, but that one, yeah, I wasn't a wasn't hundred percent sold on. Um, not a hundred percent anyway, maybe 85% maybe sold on. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been listening to this month, this uh, last month, this month still. Um, I've now started um, another one, Let's see if I can remember it. Um, nope, but it's also set in London in a similar time period and I'll probably have finished, it's a different author though, and I'll have probably finished it by the time of next podcast so I can tell you about that, that next time as well, if you're interested. But thank you very much for watching. That's about it for, for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do please like and subscribe and feel free to leave a comment as well. Let me know what you're working on at the moment. What do you like to read or listen to? You probably don't read, do you? But what do you like to watch or listen to while you're crocheting or knitting and what projects you're working on? And um, yeah, hopefully I'll be back to film again in a few weeks. But if you're celebrating Easter or you're on school holidays, have a really lovely time and enjoy everything you're working on. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.